Hey everybody, welcome back to Stitchocalypse, a handmade podcast for all things stitchy and witchy. I'm Brittany and uh, I'm your host. I'm here to talk to you. So, um, let's see. There's a roly poly on the floor. <laughs> so, uh, that can kind of go into where I'm at. So uh, this is a podcast that I film at home in uh, Napa, California. We're set into the hills. Um, so sometimes things like roly polies get into our house. Um, they're fine. So, all right, let's get into it. Um, again, I don't have any finished sewing to show you, but I do have some sewing related stuff, which is exciting because I've been in a slump slash knitting's taken over my life. I'm a crazy knitting person right now. But um, as some people in the sewing community may be aware, Charm Patterns just released um, their latest pattern, which um, Gertie, she released the night and day dress. And I did pre-order this last month, maybe. And this is the box. Where's the so beautiful. She wasn't kidding when she said that this was a lot of work to put together. I mean, the packaging alone is incredibly thought out. Um, it's a kind of a little box. And there I think are ooh, maybe five different sheets of tissue with all the sizes. Um, but I did want to kind of show you guys a little bit of it. And um, this is the booklet. Now, Gertie said that this is a choose your own adventure sort of approach to sewing, um, which the instructions are written as such. And so this is your instruction, instruction booklet, which I really, actually really like. Um, this is your first page. I hope it's okay that I'm kind of showing a little bit. I won't really show too much her introduction. Um, I would have liked to see these in color, but being that she's, you know, an indie company, I understand, um, you know, keeping costs down and stuff like that. So those, the images on the inside are in black and white and um, just instructions on instructions. So based on the dress you want to make, you will be told to go to certain pages for your next step. And these are all the line drawings of the pages. She has included a really cute little croquis here for you to kind of plan out your dress. Now for myself, I'm going to be doing the, where's the camera? The square neckline with the bishop sleeve to my elbow and this particular dress she has the gathered um, kind of focus she has <laughs> the gathered skirt anyway it's the gathered um, skirt at the hips I'm going to be doing um, just the simple circle skirt because movement um, so I have cut out my pieces, I've made my first muslin, and of that I did size, two, but I think it's a 10, I did the 10, so the finished garment measurements are 43 inches in the bust, 32 and 5 eighths in the waist. So I will be doing that. I haven't decided if I want to do the square collar, if I don't do it on this version that I'm working on now, I see a lot more of this in the future. I'd actually even love to hack this into just a top to wear because it's super versatile and would be majorly cute with jeans. But I do, so I have my muslin, right? And I haven't been able to really go further on that dress because Joann's is like an hour away from me. In either direction, I could go to Santa Rosa and it's an hour, I could go to Vacaville and if there's traffic, it's 45 minutes. So, mm, that sucks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, 
I had need of a zipper and I also needed lining. So that had been on hold until I could get out there. And when I finally did, there was like not a lining fabric there that I wanted to use. They didn't have a plain black shirt. So uh, I just got my zipper and I'm gonna need to cut out the, um, the facing. I'm gonna need to trace out the facing pieces for my sides and put those in there instead of fully lining it. Cause I don't want, I don't think I even bought enough to self line it. That was a little annoying. So that has set me back a bit on my um on my night and day dress but that's okay because i've actually been knitting a lot for the beauty school cal and i really didn't have time to be like going through more than one project at a time but enough that so i was able to get come on six yards of the kiss of the spider woman in her black off of Etsy from Granny's Vintage, I think is the seller. Um, I'll put a link to her shop below. Um, so I was really excited. I got six continuous yards of this baby. She shipped it so crazy fast. I think she's located in Colorado. So I got it in like two days, which was lovely. So, and for reference, I have a, um, I'm a 36, double G and I don't feel that I need any bust adjustment on that one at all and the waist fits pretty well it's it's a little loose under my bust just because of the nature of my bust but I think with the lining um well I was gonna fully line it with the lining it would have sat a little bit better wow now I have to think about this again I don't think I need to do an FBI, FBA on that one because um, it fits really nicely here and that, like I said, the waist feels okay. I just need to think, maybe I do need to line it and I'll just have to suck it up and dye some muslin. Ugh, I hate doing that. <laughs> um, anyhow, so the double D cup in a size 10 fits pretty, pretty good for um, my bust if you are similar i would start there so that's that's that for sewing really um like i said i've been knitting a lot so i haven't gotten to my machine as much but i did get the muslin done so that's that's a huge thing if you're a sewer you know that is a huge part of your time and it's really annoying to do it but i felt like I needed to do a muslin with this one and I'm glad that I did because I don't have a lot of experience with setting in my sleeves. I tend to avoid those kinds of projects anyway, um, but then I don't wear them so much because I don't want my arms exposed. So it's kind of like a waste of my time. So I'm getting used to doing that and it was pretty good. The construction so far is really easy. Gertie's charm pattern um, instructions have been really great from every release. So this one's no exception. I know some people kind of feel like the big four can speak to you like you know what you're doing, which is kind of annoying when you don't. So again, I'm really pleased with the look of the pattern, the instructions so far, the fit of the garment um, via my muslin. So I'm really excited to get going on that after my, my knitting projects are finished and uh, have something fancy to wear for fall. Not that I go anywhere, but it's good to have an option, right? <sighs> All right, knitting, on to knitting. Okay, so um, if you are part of the Beauty School Cal or you are just kind of following um, everybody, you know that the deadline, as I'm filming this on Friday, the 30th the 30th um, you know Monday the third is the deadline to have everything posted um, I don't know if I'm going to make it, it this has been a saga for sure um, I don't know if I'm going to make it and I am gonna be super duper bummed if I don't but I'm trying my darndest so um, <laughs> this is where I'm at right now 
This is where I'm at right now. <laughs> so I have bound off at the waist. This is super cropped. It's it's super cropped and it's exactly where I want it to hit on the jeans I plan on wearing it with. So I am so happy about that. Um, I did a tube, come on, yo. Everybody puts their hand there and I feel like it never works. <laughs> I did a tubular bind off. Yo, get out of here. Um, I did a tubular bind off on here. Um, this is the first time I've ever done that. And um, I didn't know what I was getting into when I started it. <laughs> um, and there was no going back for me, at least. So um, I totally screwed up the join. You can see um, it's my eyebrow. Um, I totally that's that up right there there's a there's a bit of a jog in the ribbing um, because I didn't use locking stitch markers when I pulled them off the needle the first two and as I was going I didn't notice that the stitch markers had popped off and so obviously the stitches started to run a bit and I I thought I caught them pretty well but um, you know it is what it is but I'm okay with it because that was my first time doing it um, and I know I am not doing my sleeves and I'm doing my neck because last night I thought that while I was watching TV, I would just do the neck because I've never done the sleeves and I didn't want to think about short rows while I'm watching TV. So I started working on the neck and the next thing I knew I needed to go to bed. So I was asleep by like 10. <laughs> I was really tired. So I have my needles on my neck. And I don't think I'm going to pull them off. I think I'm going to just do the neck today. I want to do the mock turtleneck. And I'm going to get that done. Um, and then, guys, I want to do the three-quarter length sleeve. But I I don't think I'm going to get that done by Monday. I'm, like, blocked and every... I don't know what. It's the reason why I'm in this mess is because I was a dummy and I did not pay attention to the instructions. So as I'm working my decreases, I'm only working them on one side of the place marker, down the side. And I remember looking at it going, oh, it's really odd. I wonder why she's having us decrease like this, like on one side of the garment. I mean, I was doing both sides, but like the left and the right side, but I was only decreasing on the, the front, not on the back. And I thought it was weird. But instead of using my brain and checking the instructions and being like, hmm, uh, did I read this right? I didn't. So just before I started the rib, I'm like, this is just so odd. So I, just before I start the rib is when I decide to check the instructions and I go, wow, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I need to rip this all back because it's wrong. So I rip back the body and I'm like, well, this is the catch up week that she had kind of built into it. So this is okay. And I rip back the body and I start going, going, going. So, um, the, where my stitch mark or where my, um, yeah, my progress keeper is, is where I rip back to. <laughs> I went back to all of that and I'm like, okay, so I'm going, 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 going. And the other day I finally am like, okay, I need to try this on. So I put my good bra on. I'm not wearing my good bra for you guys today. Sorry, but I put my good bra on and I'm like shimmy it on. I had to put it all on scrap yarn because I don't have interchangeable needles for size three. My, like I said, only starts at a four. So lesson learned, I need to get interchangeables in a three so that I can, you know, add extensions to um, my needles so I don't have to put it on scrap yarn. Rookie mistake, I'm sure. So I'm just putting it all on scrap yarn and I'm trying it on. And I do know that it kind of is going to float away from my body a little bit because there's no ribbing. It's it's just raw at the bottom. So I was taking that into account, but I really wasn't happy with how, just like how loose it was. I was really nervous about how loose it was going to be on me. So, 
what I do, I rip it back again. So twice in one week, I've ripped back to my ripped my body back, um, and I do really aggressive um, decreasing on it. And um, I think I did like a progressive decrease. This is I don't know if this is like a faux pas or anything like that, but I ended up going okay every two rows I'll decrease, then three, then four, then five, then six, then my um 10 or my 10 rows of just no decreasing so i kind of did it like that i don't think i did a full 10 rows of um just straight knitting before the rib i think i did maybe five because it was the length that i wanted tried it on so far it looked really good and when you <laughs> when i put it all on scrap yarn it was like seriously an hour process like putting it on scrap yarn trying it on taking care of the baby putting it back on my needles <laughs> from the scrap yarn like it was just ridiculous so i'm never doing that again i am going and getting interchangeables that i can add extensions to so i don't ever have to do that again that was way too much time lost so here i am having pulled back the body twice on this thing and um finally cast it off at the rib yesterday. I told my husband, like, I am never alone. He is always on, like, the baby is always on top of me. I need you to take him outside and I need to finish this because I think I'm going to go crazy. Anyway, so that's, this, this has been a saga. This has been a saga. But I, so I bound it off last night though and I tried it on with my bad girl denim and I need like 60 more of these sweaters. I really, really like it. So I'm hoping that it still looks great with the mock turtleneck and um, it's gonna look awesome with the three quarter sleeves, but I just, I'm really hoping I get this done, but I just don't know. And I'm gonna be super disappointed in myself if I don't, but we'll see. So that's my beauty school sweater right now. Um, if you are working on a beauty school sweater, I would love to see it. I'm always checking the hashtag on Instagram. It's really fun to see everybody. It, it seems like everybody's doing a pink thing. A lot of people want pink sweaters and I think it's awesome. It's just like a gang of pink beauty school sweaters across the world. It's really fun. So there's that. And then, um, like I said in my last episode, I've been, um, I cast on my What the Fade shawl because I just, after like straight stockinette, stockinette stitch for so long, I'm like, I need to do something else. So um, this did sit, like I said, it sat for a couple days because I went through all the trauma of ripping out the body and starting it over again. Um, however, I was naughty and I spent way too much time on this. So that's another reason why I might not finish is because I, I got hooked on this. So this is, um, let's see, from here, obviously this is where we start the first fade. And then um, the entire, the rest of like the next. However, um, I think I'm on to the next fade. I need to check. Um, and I actually did try and fade in my last two colors and it was a nightmare. I don't know what happened. Like one little thing goes wrong in brioche and the next thing I know, I am, the next thing I know, there is a new spine randomly right in here. And this one stops and it just looks ridiculous. I'm like, I can't fix it. So I had to rip that back twice too. Um, so finally, after the second time, I ripped back and put them back on my needles. I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I have to do my sweater. So that's been kind of ridiculous too. But it's just so squishy and it's fall. It feels like fall here. Like you can smell it and you see it and just, oh, it's so nice. So I just really wanted to start knitting my shawl. Again, pink. I don't know what's going on with me in pink right now. So... Um, whew, it's gonna be a long episode, sorry. So let's see. Okay, stash and future projects are gonna kinda go in hand in hand in this episode. 
which is good because I don't want to have so much stash that I never knit it. Um, and I'm so picky that I might like one thing and like in one moment and then six months down the road be like, wow, I would never wear this anymore. Like, what was I thinking? So I've been trying to keep it good. <laughs> um, so last week I went to a local yarn store in Santa Rosa called Castaway and Folk. And I go there like every couple of months just to poke around and see what's going on. And they're on Instagram as Castaway and Folk. Super cute shop, it's really big, and they have a lot of stuff there. So um, one project that I've been wanting to do is the Newling Bonnet or Hat by Caitlin Hunter, Boyland Knitworks, and I wanna make one for Odin. I just love them, and I regret not getting into knitting because earlier, like when he was in my womb, because, <laughs> um, it's so cute and like these bonnets are so adorable on newborn babies so I'm like wow missed opportunity um, but I got this one so this is um, blue sky fibers baby alpaca um, this is the sport weight and I know the pattern calls for worsted but they had their sport weight there um, as well and when I laid them down like it obviously like right here to kind of took a strand and like sat them next to each other and it was so close and maybe that's like not how you do this <laughs> at all but um i don't know um i just thought maybe it'll be close so this is the color avocado and odin has these like bright gray blue eyes and I love dark blues on him, but I didn't know if I would want him in a dark blue bonnet and I wanted something that would kind of go through winter. So I thought that this was really cute and this is so darn soft. Oh my gosh. I want a sweater out of this. This is so soft. So um, there's that. So once I'm done with my beauty school sweater, I will be casting on my kid a bonnet. And then, um, the other day, I went to my local yarn store here in Napa called Yarns on First. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, I picked out some more. Um, what's it? I can't ever remember anything. Blue Sky. Some more Blue Sky fibers. This is their worsted. And um, the color Cast Iron. So this is the wool stock worsted and cast iron. And this is the larger skein, which I guess they do mostly in um, like neutral colors. So if I wanted the avocado, I don't think they do this one or a green. This, she had this really beautiful forest green in the worsted as well that I wanted to do this sweater out of, but they only have the smaller skeins and um, she didn't have enough. So it's probably for the best because I really like black and gray and I know I'm going to wear a sweater to death out of this. And, um, and then I don't have to weave in so many ends. So this one's 370 yards, um, 150 grams, and this is Highland wool, 100% Highland wool in cast iron. Oops, sorry. The, the sun's coming out, so... Hopefully the glare's not too bad. So this one is going to be a May sweater by Andrea Mowry. I'm going to be making the size large and I have a looser kind of gauge. So, um, cause she's wearing a medium, the sample in the photo is a medium. And when I realized that after I bought this yarn, I was a little nervous, but um, cause I'm quite busty. I think I've said it a million times by this point. So I was kind of nervous about that. Um, but I think maybe I can block it a little bigger. I don't know. And I've been dropping weight for some reason quickly. I think it's the Invisalign. I, I'm a snacker. I like, I come from a long line of snackers. This is like what we do. We snack. And I'm so sick of pulling these out of my <laughs> mouth over and over again. So I don't snack the way I used to. 
and um, who would have thunk? Just shedding, shedding the baby weight. So there's that. And um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so the last thing I got at Yarns on first, and I'm like so excited because I've been like popping in and not really spending anything because she didn't have it, but I didn't want to be like, oh, I don't have this. And I don't ever talk to anyone like that. But <laughs> um, I want, I should have gotten this when it was in the shop last and I didn't because sometimes I don't follow my heart and then I miss out. So <laughs> she finally got another shipment of Madeline Tosh. Um, so this is the Daenerys colorway, which is just so freaking cool. So neat. So um, I'm a big blue green purpley kind of gal so this here was just oh come on son don't be a jerk anyway my jam but this is not going to be for me these are going to be socks my first pair of socks for my husband because I feel like I knit for myself a lot and maybe I should be kind and knit for somebody else that's not me or my babe. So um, I'm knit for my other babe. Make him a pair of fall socks and we'll see how that goes. So if they turn out too small, then I can have them. And if they turn out too big, then I can also have them. <laughs> um, but then at least I'll say that I tried. So. I was really, really excited about this one. And then um, there's another yarn shop that I like to go to because I really, one, it's a yarn shop, and two, because it's right next to some really good food um, in Sacramento called Stiltskin. And as far as I know, she is like the only local yarn shop in the area up there. Um, if there's others, let me know if you know you happen to live in Sacramento randomly fall upon this video and manage to stick around to this point let me know <laughs> but um, anyway so she's um, the shop owner is really really sweet and I can't remember her name um, but anyway she's like working really hard on getting like modern stuff in there and um just like really fun stuff you see on instagram all the time so i got myself a nerd bird makery canvas bag nevertheless she knitted so she had both she had this one and then she had the one um with the girl that has like the space ball pom-poms in her hair with a uh, a flower crown which I really loved that one too but I am a sucker for anything Rosie the Riveter looking um so I got myself this one and so this is my perfect the perfect um yarn shop shopping bag so it fits all of the the bigger squishy stuff so treated myself um the other thing that I really want to treat myself to it because I might be visiting family this um, holiday season I really want the ritual dye backpack look really bad oh shit I probably missed her update damn it yeah it's 10 30 I was gonna try and make her update and I totally forgot anyway <laughs> um I really I really want it I can't decide what color I want I think I want it in black but I don't know if I'm like a big fan of like the black straps as well but I mean who am I kidding I probably am so I just thought that that would be really easy because the last time I um, I traveled with Odin, I um, I was in the airport. I had my I had a backpack as my purse. His diaper bag is a backpack, so I'm like two backpacks, and then my knitting bag was just a tote at the at the time. So I'm like going through the airport, baby, two backpacks, tote car seat stroller like all of this stuff and I'm like I look insane this is insane so I've been thinking about the ritual dyes backpack because I can just plop a like a good project in there and my wallet purse or my wallet and my phone in a tote um zipper pouch you know as you would do 
and be done with it. So like combine two of those things into one. Um, so if I go holiday traveling, I would really like to do that. Um, if anybody has that bag and really, really loves it or recommends a different alternative, let me know because I'm not sure. I think I want it. I don't know. So that's that for knitting, stash, and other things. Um, I also did have another um, not like craft project I wanted to show you. So um, hold on a second. So um, I wanted to decorate our room, make it more our own because we recently moved um, and a lot of my stuff um, is in storage. I don't even have, I don't even have like my crafting chest anymore that's up in lake county so <laughs> um, i have like nothing i'm starting from scratch up here but um anyways um yeah so i made joann's these were 350 this is the 14 inch ring at joann's um and then i just used all the coupons to get this acrylic yarn for cheap um, I think it's a, and I just made this hoopy thing. I made three of them and I don't know, I'm not feeling it like where I had originally thought I was gonna put them, but I mean, nevertheless, I love this and this was really, really fun. So I um, used some um, velvet yarn, some Burnett roving, and then this is like a, this is by Buttercream which is I think a Joann's like luxury house brand yarn. This is the angel hair color or um, yarn and it was on sale for like $2.30. So I got all the skeins they had left of that, which was like only two. Um, and just loop this around and it's super pretty. If you can't tell, I have a thing for pink. Hmm? And berry, look at that. I just wanna eat it. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> So I made three of these and I've been trying to figure out where I want to put them. Um, might do a blog post on them as soon as I figure out where they go so I can take a decent looking picture. We'll see. But so that's all the making that I've been up to. And for, let's see, I don't know, personal stuff. I don't really have anything personal going on right now to share. The baby is growing, being annoying and wonderful it's amazing how they're all of these things at once so last night i got a full six hours of uninterrupted sleep which is amazing so he's been waking up crying and fussing around a lot um yesterday i was up at 4 45 with him and i thought he went back to sleep with his dad so I'm like and my back was screaming so i went out to do some yoga in the backyard as the sun was rising in the valley and it looked really pretty. Um, so I'm like trying to have a yogi moment out there. And I take my headphones off just for like a second, um, just to like hear everything. And the baby is just like screaming bloody murder. So I had to cut my yogi moment short and uh, take him on a car ride, which I never ever do. I didn't want him to be that kind of baby. Um, Cause I had a sister who was like that. And I felt like my parents were always putting her in the car and taking her for rides to get her to sleep. So, um, last ditch effort, 6 a.m., I, um, I put him in the, his car seat and I go to Starbucks <laughs> because mama needed a treat and that's a treat because it's the only place with good coffee and a drive through So <laughs> we went to Starbucks on like literally the other side of town. We live in the north end of the valley. Um, I mean, not as far as St. Helena, but we live in the north end of Napa, up in the hills. So I had to like go all the way down to the south end and go to Starbucks. But it was okay because he fell asleep and he slept for another two hours. And I had my yogi moment, which was really great. Um, yeah, other than that, really not too much going on. I'm, I have a new backdrop here because husband and baby are taking a nap in our bedroom. And the wall and door are very thin. And I didn't want to wake them up because I'm a considerate, courteous spouse and mother. 
you know. But I hear some rustling around, so it's either the cat or them. So that's my cue. I'm gonna get some tea because it's been a stressful week. <laughs> All right, bye guys. <laughs>